a question for you. How thick should the sponge be on the rubber on your racket? That's something maybe you're not losing a whole lot of sleep about, but it could make a difference in how you play when you compete and uh, what's, what should be the ideal thickness for the rubber that you have. Uh, they're the sponge for your table tennis rubber. Okay, um, I'm gonna break it down and kind of tell you the advantages starting with the thickest and going all the way down to the thinnest. For most players, you're gonna probably be in the medium range. A lot of players go with 2.0 on both sides, never look back, never think about it again. A lot of players go with maximum thickness and uh, just go with that. And for some players, that's exactly what they need to do. But it can make a difference uh, for a lot of players, and so we're gonna break it down. All right, maximum thickness. If you're using maximum thickness rubber, most information is going to tell you that that's the thickness you want to use because you're trying to get the most speed and spin. And generally that's true, but there's a, a little bit more to it. Some of that's going to depend which blade did you put it on? Did you put it on a fast blade? Just some rubber just matches up with some blades better than others. And unfortunately, it takes some trial and error sometimes to figure that out and sometimes some expense to get that figured out. But if you're a forehand looper uh, or just an aggressive player, particularly one that plays from mid distance and even back further than that, you're gonna need at least 2.0 and probably maximum. For a lot of players, I recommend slightly thinner sponge on the backhand and um, maybe something like maximum on the forehand for their looping and unless they're really backing off the table and an unusual player, nothing more than 2.0 on their backhand. So a little thicker on the forehand, a little less on the backhand is sometimes a good deal. But like I said, if you're a really aggressive, high spin player, uh, comfortable playing at mid distance and are getting comfortable playing even further back than that, then uh, maximum could be the way to go. What you sacrifice with maximum sponge can be the short shots, little touch shots. That's going to take some getting used to. Some players just go ahead and uh, flip those shots, don't really do a whole lot of pushing. Um, get into quick rallies quick very very fast so uh, I would say there for your average player there's gonna be some sacrifice by going maximum and for most intermediate players you probably do just as well to go with something like 2.0 even 2.1 is not really considered maximum uh, some players avoid maximum because they're going to be boosting the rubber which is going to thicken the sponge and uh, so there's there's some advantages you're definitely going to get the most speed and spin uh, in most cases with with the maximum sponge but there is a trade-off for that and when I whenever I'm in a situation where it's a question between speed or control I'll err on the side of control uh, because that's where a lot of points are lost. So it, it can work for some players. More advanced players uh, would go with them with maximum, or but even very high level players sometimes don't go with the absolute maximum. They can go with 2.0. Okay, 2.0 is probably what most people are using, and there's some good reasons for it. It's a it's going to allow you to make aggressive shots. It's going to allow you to play at mid-distance. Uh, if you get used to it and you've got 2.0 on both sides of your paddle, then that's a very balanced feel. And uh, even if you've got slightly different weight of sponge or rubber on one side and the other, uh, 2.0 works for a lot of, lot of players. If you're an all-around player, if you're an offensive, aggressive player, 2.0, 2.1, something right there even there there's rubber that's 1.9 now what's the difference between a 1.9 and 2.0 uh, 
<laughs> not much apparently, but uh, for instance, Tenergy comes in 1.9, 2.1, and occasionally you can find some Tenergies in 1.7. Big difference between the 1.7 and 2.1, and the players that use Tenergy will tell you a uh, huge difference between 1.9 and 2.1. So you're really trying to fine tune things at that point. But if you're starting out and you are have decent strokes and you're comfortable with 2.0, that's a that's a good way to go. For some players. Like I said, 1.8, 1.7 on the back end is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, some coaches will tell you to avoid that, to just go ahead and get used to the thicker sponge. I'm using a little bit thinner sponge, more like a 1.5 on my back end. And while that does give me excellent control, it's a somewhat limiting on how much speed I can get, even with good backhand loops and attacks. There's just not a tremendous amount of speed that I'm going to get with it. I can hit, hit some decent shots, and my blade is fast enough to, to make that work. But in training, when I'm really trying to put pressure on people uh, with the backhand rather than just doing a multi-ball training, it's, it's not going to get you the same kind of speed that the faster stuff. It's not going to do what a 2.1 Tenergy or Dignix will do, but for playing matches and for my style of play, uh, works pretty good most of the time. So 1.8 can be something as an option for your backhand. I wouldn't, I, I haven't really come across many situations where you would want thinner on the forehand and thicker on the backhand, uh, at least not unless it's a combination racket of some sort where one of the, one side is pips, uh, might be some exceptions to that. But for the most part, the 1.8 is going to give you a little bit better feel for the ball, slightly better control, maybe a little bit better touch. And some players have found after using nothing but 2.0 forever, after, when they finally went to 1.8, it was like, wow, uh, didn't lose that much in speed and actually have pretty good control. Okay, so if you're getting less than 1.5, 1.8, for instance, and going down to 1.7, 1.5, now you're getting into defensive type rubber. And this is the kind of stuff that's really good for blocking, it's good for pushes, it's good for chops. Um, it's enough if you're using it on your forehand and using long pips on your backhand or that you can get a decent loop out of it, but it's as long as that's not your main weapon. So you, 1.7 can work. Sometimes I'll use that. I've got some rackets that have 1.7. If somebody forgets their racket or if it's a starter racket, um, that kind of rubber can, I mean, uh, with real beginners and particularly older players where they really need to feel the ball, 1.7, 1.5 is probably something to start them out with for a while until they develop their style, figure out exactly how they're trying to get points. But if you really want to feel the ball and develop your strokes, a little bit slower setup, which can include thinner sponge, uh, can, can help. So we're not really talking about playing hard bat. I'm not going into no sponge. Uh, for one reason, if you've got smooth rubber, you have to have, I mean, by the rules, you have to have some sponge. If you've got pips, you could play with no sponge and that really lightens up the blade, or lightens up, doesn't technically lighten up the blade, but it lightens up the feel of your setup and your racket. So, um, going to a lighter, thinner sponge is gonna give you a better feel for the ball. And if perhaps you do have pips with no sponge, that really lightens it up and actually improves the feel or changes the feel at least of the side that has sponge. So 1.5 is something that apparently players used to use. Some rubber they, is not even available in 1.5. It won't, might not be available in anything less than 1.8 or even 2.0. It's hard to find some of the thinner sponges. Uh, it's something that a lot of articles that are written about thin sponge or 
the thickness of sponge, really don't even address the really thin stuff. And believe it or not, there's stuff that's even less than 1.0, we'll get to in a minute, is 0.5 that's a defensive rubber that I've used and uh, it's a lot of fun. That's very, very different. But once you get to 1.5, it's not going to work as well for looping. It's possible. Uh, it's usually great for blocking, chopping, a controlled counter driving game. Uh, it's going to not give you the type of spin and speed that the thicker sponge will, but for certain players, for older players, for casual players, 1.5 could actually be a, a pretty decent option. And uh, it gives you a good feel for the ball. And uh, I've recently seen where even top players, when they're learning a new stroke, will go to a slower setup. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're using uh, a super thin sponge, but they'll go to a slower blade, uh, slower rubber until they learn the stroke and then work back to their uh, normal racket. Point being, you really, once you start getting into this really thin sponge, you're really going to feel the ball and you get to a slower blade, you're going to be able to make shots that you probably, uh, they're going to land on the table you never made before, uh, or at least were harder to make. That doesn't necessarily mean that everybody should go to the thin sponge because that's uh, even though they land on the table, they're not going to be as fast. They're not going to give you the kind of shot that you hope to get in the long run. But uh, there are some advantages, despite what some coaches will tell you, to actually using thin sponge at least some of the time for certain types of players and in certain situations as they're learning. Uh, I started my grandson out when I was coaching him. Uh, he was, I guess we started when he was about nine years old perhaps, and uh, I started him out with incredibly thin. We were using 1.0 on both sides. Uh, that lasted for about six months, and I got 2.0 on his forehand, and uh, was amazed at how well his forehand loop really looked after using 1.0. We uh, learned it with the thin sponge, went to the thick, and He's had a really, really nice stroke. So uh, while it was a bit of an experiment, it is possible to make that work. Okay, um, which brings us to the 1.0 sponge. Definitely defensive. The advantage of the 1.0 is uh, that most players aren't used to seeing it. They're not used to playing against it. I, I had a player who just really had problems uh, about a 1700, 1800 level player who, the, when I played him, just was so uncomfortable with the type of shots that, was com that were coming back. They weren't fast, they weren't particularly spinny, uh, they were well placed and they had good control. And um, not to say that that would work against everybody, in fact, uh, probably doesn't work against very many really good players, but it is different and it gives you extreme control if you get used to it. Not gonna really be able to loop, but you can chop really, really well with 1.0. Is there anything less than 1.0? Yes, there is. Uh, I know of at least one rubber that I used for a while that was 0.5. It wasn't quite like just using wood. It, it was very di different and just imagine what it would be like 1.0 and uh, make it even more that way. 0.5 was ridiculously slow perhaps, but the control at moderate speed was really, really good. It was fun to use in the long run. Even for me, and I'm used to a lot of defensive rubber, it wasn't the best option, but uh, it's, it's really, really different, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it for very many pit players, but um, if you've got it and you're comfortable with it, and uh, that uh, it, it could work for somebody. It worked, for, somewhat worked for me for a little while, but uh, I wouldn't recommend, even if you're a big time chopper, going that thin 
but uh, there's there's exceptions to the rules. So maybe you're the you're that exception. It's uh, it's really interesting to feel. So you got a lot of different options. I know some players are very interested in this subject. Some players are, have no interest in it at all. And then there's some players that probably should take a little bit of interest in it. But uh, the the thickness of the sponge makes a big, big difference in uh, the feel of the ball and how you play. If you've got the if you've got the really wrong thickness for what your type of game, it will hurt you. And uh, sometimes just getting something a little bit thinner, maybe even a little bit thicker, maybe a little bit different than what you've got is a good option. And um, you might want to get a coach to give you a little bit of guidance on that. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.